are you in your day? Halfway through. Um, these are. This is a typical day. I come home in the afternoon. I'll get to the gym in Mississauga around 8.30 or 9, but that's after leaving the house at like 7 or 6.45, right? Because of the traffic and stuff getting from here in Hamilton to uh, Mississauga every day is a bit of a grind. Uh, we have workouts every morning. We have university players, high school players, and then our, our pro guys, the power guys. Um, some other guys can get around the NBL and then a lot of guys from overseas and we even had some NBA pre-draft guys come in over the course of the last month. So we do that uh, until about one. I come home, I spend some time with the boys just like this and every once in a while we'll get pizza or whatever's most convenient uh, at that time. You know, try and keep it healthy but every once in a while we'll do the pizza thing. And then uh, after about an hour or two, I'm back on the road and back to the gym for about three or four more hours of workouts in the Toronto area uh, tonight. Yeah. That's incredible. So, in these off-season workouts, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to gather or uh, cover most skills and just gradual improvement, or are you focusing on a few things? It's different because we don't really. I know exactly who I want back from our team from last year. Um, so when I have those guys in the gym, we concentrate on specifics, right? Uh, building a bond with them is the first thing. You know, last year was hard because they were new to me and I was new to them. And then we're right, thrown into the fire right away. So for example, a guy like Jazz took Jazz and I a long time to get used to each other. Uh, we finally did towards the end. Um, but now I'm in the gym every day with Jazz, building a bond and really, really working hard with him. And so I'm building that relationship along with his skills and then the, the stuff that I know he needs to do for next year. Um, other guys, I don't know some of these other guys. I haven't coached them before. I'm just working with them for the first time. So I'm identifying their weaknesses, fixing them, working on them, really enhancing their conditioning. And then the whole concept is maybe these guys will play for the power. Maybe they're uh, perfect for the power. Or maybe I get them ready to go to a job somewhere else. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm taking these guys and trying to get them better one, you know, one day at a time, one step at a time. Most of it involves getting them into better shape at this time. Late May, early June, they've played pro for a year. They've taken you know, a month off after the season, or three, four weeks off, whatever the case may be. And right now, it's about conditioning. Building a, you know, building a foundation to build on, you know, all that kind of stuff. So. Okay, now we're in a basketball home. So, how are the kids and your wife assimilated into the life? I don't know. Pretty good, I think. <laughs> Pretty good. I, Yen and I were talking about it earlier today. The season was hard because I, I did that season last year with also with a full time job. You know, I didn't just do the, like every other coach in the league was a full time coach. I was part time, mm -hmm. full time hours, but part time as far as. You know, working a full other job, and I said I don't think I would have been able to get through it if I didn't have, you know, like the good support at home. Like Yen was really, really supportive. It's long, long days, losing. We lost all year long. You know, we lost I think for like six weeks straight when you actually looked at our one of our losing streaks. Yeah. And so Yen was really good. Yen, Yen uh, understands the game. She knows. I knew what I was marrying into. Yeah. <laughs> I say that. It's a lifestyle. It really is. And being a coach's wife is my mom, who has done it her whole, you know, married like 40 years basically, would tell you the same thing. It's tough. It's a grind. Um, but I have, she has, Yen's super supportive and has a good feel for the game too. And she's pretty hard nosed and she, she'll tell me when I made bad decisions. <laughs> But now you're the priority, and then the kids, and then basketball. But you still have managed to have time for all three. And that's the crazy thing well, about it. Because you're good at time management and actually making time for us to making us feel important. Like, you know, like but Natalie, that's the hard part about being a coach's wife. Like some days they're not the priority. Yeah. And obviously, in my heart, they are. But you know, so, like a game day, you leave at nine in the morning, and you don't come back till eleven. And if you lose, like we lost so consistently this year, coming coming back at 11 after a loss like that is it's hard. You know, some of those nights and days were hard. Did you always feel like a coach even when you were a player? Yeah, I did. I knew really, really young that it was something I wanted, at a young age, it was something I wanted to do. Uh, I, I, it, was, it was my problem as a player, as I always looked at everything from a coaching standpoint. I would never do that in practice. Uh, we, we need to stop running this play, or we need to do less of this, or coach shouldn't let that guy do that. And it always bothered me. Every level I played at, I analyzed the game from a coaching standpoint, never from a playing standpoint, because that's how I was raised, right? Mm -hmm. That's how the game was taught to me. That's how, I, that's how I was introduced to basketball. And so I actually had a lot of problems with a lot of coaches that I played for, because I always felt like I, I wanted to do it differently. Not necessarily they were bad, I just, I would do this, I would do that, I would do more of this, less of that. But you felt like you knew better. I did. 
I did, and that was just kind of the way I was raised. Okay. What do the boys know about basketball so far? I don't know. You like basketball, Tao? Do you? Tao's two. He likes it. They, they know. They know. He it. knows Marcus. that Daddy plays basketball. They know for sure when uh, when we win, it's a good thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Marcus always says, "Yeah, we can go buy a toy." Yeah, we buy toys when we win. We can't when we lose. Oh, so not too many toys this year. No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Dusty. Dusty. Yeah. Okay, Marcus. Let's show Natalie what you did here. Show, show what the wall is all about. What do you have? What's this? Train. Train. Did you draw that? No. Who drew that train? Nana. Nana drew it? Yeah, yeah. Now, where would you be on the train? Would you be in the front driving the train? Would, would you be in the back where it's a lot faster? <laughs> ah, man. <laughs> what about the, what about the, um, what about the fish and stuff? What's your favorite? Show which one you do. Did you draw any of this stuff? What did you do, Tao? You want to show Natalie? I got the chimney. You drew the seaweed? Yes, seaweed. Seaweed. <laughs> Details? Yeah, yeah. You, you might have missed it, but Daddy Kyle also had his. Um, There's a drop place up there. Place up there. It's in a washroom, actually. Oh, sorry. It's from Rocco. I just drank the water. <laughs> um, you see it? Do you oh need God, a better light? Three, four, five, two. Th oh my gosh. So he. Yeah, and then I. someone came over and wrote that. <laughs> Everything but basketball. You got it, Natalie. See you guys at the Hershey Center next season. How'd I go? <laughs>